welcome everybody to the Sonoma Spiel. My name is Tim, and it's a slightly wet day in wine country, but that's okay because it's good for the dormant vines, and it's good for our reservoirs, and it's even good for plants, as we're probably going to find out. Now, before I go any further, I have to tell everybody that I have a very special guest. I know every week I say I have a very special guest. This time, I absolutely mean it. This guy's an expert on what we're going to talk about. He knows a lot of things, and he's been doing some great stuff. I've got Scott Medbury with the Sonoma Botanical Garden. Scott, welcome. Thank you. It's delighted to be here. It's wow. I uh, you, you came down from the mountain In- on a slightly wet day to come talk to us. Indeed. So, so uh, <laughs> Scott, tell me what what's your title again? I'm sorry. Executive Director at the Garden. Yeah. At the Garden at the yeah. Sonoma Botanical Garden. Correct. And uh, how how you doing today? Very well. Good. Keep Good. it dry. Dry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you're 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 living on the side of a mountain in Sonoma Valley yep. that has a, an old quarry, I recall. That's right. And probably, is there water like just coming down in the streams? And Gosh, yeah. Really? I have not seen those arroyos run like this. And, okay. you know, we flooded maybe 50 odd years ago okay. and kind of washed okay. out our founder's house and garden. And it looked very close to doing that just oh, a really? week ago. Yeah, Did absolutely. Did you have your canoe ready? And yeah, your... <laughs> definitely. My escape plan, for sure. Just like yeah. a zip line to go down yeah. the hill or something totally. like that. Totally, yes. Um, Scott, why don't, why don't we start? Tell me a little bit about where the Sonoma Botanical Garden is, and I think it changed names in the past couple of years, so some people might not know that they already know you. Right. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, certainly. So we're in the central part of the Sonoma Valley in Glen Ellen on the east side of Highway 12 on the okay. on the western slopes of the Mayacamas Mountains okay. on a 67-acre parcel that has vineyard in the valley floor, an upland 25-acre collection of wild-collected Asian plants, okay. and then now a new California section with really mature, you know, seven species of California oaks in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So were the oaks there already or did you guys bring those in? No, they were there. And so those Great. are like, you know, familiar, you know, big trees, but some interesting ones. And so we, our name originally chosen by our founder, Jane Jansen, mm-hmm. was Quarry Hill Botanical Garden because it was a former sandstone quarry that was up on the hill. So, oh, okay. And what, what were they, what was the quarry for sandstone? Was that like for you know, road I, stuff? I or? think they, they ground it for road base. It wasn't oh, okay. so much for construction. Yeah. So we're not, we don't have like buildings that came out of your quarry not around Sonoma right now. I don't think so. And no. it, it might have probably been a bit of an unofficial quarry in that way. But, uh, you know, but uh, it, it was informal industry back yeah. when you could do that. Right. Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> we could do that. All right, so and now it changed its name to Sonoma Botanical Garden. Correct. And why did they change that name? Is do you guys change your mission or something? Sure. Or? And we did a little bit of both. And so, you know, actually, we found that people sort of struggled to remember the name Quarry Hill. Mm-hmm. And our branding was such that it sort of looked like like we're a winery anyway, because we do have grapes, very contextual. They're right there in the front when you come up the driveway, and it looks like, you're right, when you see the sign, it looks like a vineyard sign. Yeah, and, so, and another winery. So, right. and and for some, you know, I always said you had to say it with a Brooklyn accent, Quarry, Quarry <laughs> Hill. Quarry Hill. Yeah, so then people <laughs> got it. But, you know, so for some reason, that didn't really stick. And right. then, you know, so what we've chosen as a name, and what I pitched our, our right. board was, what better brand in America than Sonoma, right? <laughs> so, uh, you guys hear that? The best brand in America. It's so Sonoma. true. It's very true. And so, but, you know, that's a name that, you know, uh, it says what it is and right. where it is right. th- in a way that requires no further explanation. Right, which is good. And that, how long ago was that? Uh, so we did it in my very first board meeting in March oh. of 20, just as the pandemic was breaking. Oh, and then we, <laughs> we sat on it for a year and then okay. rolled it out in March of uh, 2021. You came here in March of 2020? Yes, where, weeks before the endowment. Where did you come from? Well, I was for 15 years president at Brooklyn Botanic Garden in New York City. And part of that... Wait, that also says Brooklyn Botanical we, Garden. See, I know where it is and I know what it does. Yeah, yeah. and it was founded with that name. So that good, 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 you know, good branding. <laughs> Like it worked there. Yeah. yeah. And then prior to that, I was director of the San Francisco Botanical Garden, an institution which during my tenure, we actually changed the name there. And oh. that was known as the Striving Arboretum, which nobody could remember yes. and, or, or say. And then also famously of the Conservatory of Flowers, the history. That's part of that. Well, they're sort of when I, you know, I was director of two separate institutions that are oh. now much more closely Together. aligned. Right. Yeah. Because take me back for those that don't know in, in the middle of Golden Gate Park. Yes. Well, I, I guess 
one in the middle is, is you know arbitrary, right. but yeah. yeah. In, in Golden yeah. Gate Park, yeah. you have this beautiful glass building. Yes. That was built, I think, as part of the World's Fair, or was it not? No, oh, okay. it's even older than that. It oh. was a kit of parts that was erected oh, in 1878 from, oh. and is much older than that. And the provenance of the building is really not known, hmm. and uh, and then has been continuously operating since then. It was heavily damaged by a windstorm in 1995, and so right. okay. we basically took it apart to the ground and put it back up and oh, opened okay. it with great success. And then I was also of the 55-acre botanical garden, which is kind oh, okay. of more close by the California Academy of Sciences right. and the okay. Dion. Yeah. Which is... Uh, is it possible to grow things in San Francisco? A very foggy, for people who don't know, our, our summers in San Francisco. Right. And that's kind of right on the edge where the fog comes it's in. It's so right true. It, oh, it's very foggy. Yeah. yeah. You know, what I say about there is like what you cannot grow is not very much, meaning you can pretty <laughs> right. much grow everything. But right. but you always want what you cannot have. So right. people would try to grow lilacs or peonies, which <laughs> really don't like it. <laughs> right. But, but it's very mild. It's more like the cloud forests of the tropics uh, okay. at the top of the mountains in the okay. tropics. You know, so really nice. And cloudy. Cooler and cloudier. Yeah. And then you went to Brooklyn. I did. And where you, you uh, basically grew pizza <laughs> by the slice. Oh, totally. <laughs> and angry angry subway rats. Are like, oh. what was, what's the Brooklyn Botanical Garden? Well, it's a really famous institution. And I was only the sixth leader in 110 years yeah. in that job. And it was founded with a commitment to youth environmental education, sort of the alpha chapter. Okay. So um, we opened in 1910, 1912. We were already doing programming out in the schools. In 1914, opened the first children's garden in the Botanical so Garden was in the world. It, when it was founded, was it out, out from the no. city or? Was it was in kind of, Brooklyn? It was in a cluster, you know, right by Prospect Park and okay. the, the Central Library, the Brooklyn Public Library. Okay, so, so it wasn't yeah. in Brooklyn, like, you know, it used to be fields and, yeah. and, and farms. It's a, it was it's a big place, Brooklyn right, is. You right. know, fourth largest city in the United States if it was separate from like, New York City. Oh, my it's gosh. Endless, it, you know. Yeah. That's what Brooklyners say. That's how they talk. It's true. Know, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it was, it's a really special institution. And, you know, right. it serves about 250,000 school children a year. Oh, wow. Has its own high school, a leadership program for middle to high school students. Okay. So we did so many things. And during my tenure, we did a $125 million capital campaign propelling us into 10 years of construction and basically really brought that garden for its okay. second century of ser service in New York. It was a really exciting time. And then you went from there here to Sonoma. Yes. And I had been a trustee of Sonoma Botanical Garden back in the day when uh, okay. I was director in San Francisco. So this is a place I've so known. you knew about it. Yeah. I knew okay. our founder, Jane Jansen. I was okay. introduced to her about 1991 okay. and saw the garden when it first started. So I had been a trustee and an advisor. And my predecessor, our second director, Bill McNamara, retired. And I thought, you know, gosh, I've had the benefit of all these experiences and mentors. Right. And I could maybe help them kind of prep the way to really kind of go to the next level. And that's there. what I've been really dedicated to. Because I think, yeah, your predecessor, was was he the one that would kind of travel a lot and bring back Collect plants? seeds, so yeah. So he was more of a collector, adventurer, yeah. not that you're not. Right. Uh, but, but like his, his reputation, I think, was like... More a plant explorer. I've got a machete and I'm going to go to Borneo yeah, 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 and yeah. bring back, exactly. you know... A, Exactly. Um, what when Corey Hill first started, was it only working on Asian plants? Or it was. Our founder was a really kind of interesting person. She was from Tennessee, quite a pistol, okay. Jane Jensen, and wealthy person. She bought this property in 1968, mm -hmm. and then uh, she was introduced to a couple partners in the United Kingdom, the Royal Botanic Gardens Q, argu oh, right, arguably right, the right, most right. important, right. you know, sort of research oriented botanical garden in the world or in the Western world, and uh, she uh, basically underwrote a series series of expeditions to China when it first opened to Western botanists. Uh, okay. And then subsequently, they went to Japan and to Korea and to the Himalayas. And so that's that Asian collection. It's okay. wild collected from seed, outplanted out of this former rock quarry. We don't have problems with the, our dear friends, the ground dwelling rodents, because they can't really tunnel through rock. Right. That's kind of like, a, like out in West County of uh, Sonoma County, they're phenomenal, the amount of gophers. And yeah, I don't know. People would try to grow stuff out there. You have to go for cage. But, yes. but here it's it's rock that keeps them away. Okay. It's, it's true. It's good. Yeah. Well, what was, like, when you say quarry, when, when they started that, was it just bare earth when they started? It had been sort of recolonized in part by, it was a knob cone pine forest, one of California's okay. native conifers that has those closed cones that mm. hold their seeds very tight, and they require fire to regenerate. The heat opens the cones and they drop their seeds. So that's what was the, the quarry site was, was mostly those pines okay. and, and up the hills behind us, all mm. of which, by the way, um, outside our boundaries, 
burned in the nun's fire right. five years ago. 2017. Yeah. Um, which but went, but went around you. Four sides burned to our front <laughs> line and stopped. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, people say it might have been that you were a little more, uh, uh, what's the word? Irrigated? Irrigated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit like that. Like right. Fecund or something. Um, the uh, so, so you have all these Asian inspired plants, but it looks like you've changed your mission a little bit too to include other plants. Yeah. So when, you know, one of the things I was worried about, mm-hmm. and it's a real issue in the Sonoma Valley and in Sonoma mm-hmm. County in Northern California, is about our use of groundwater to irrigate these thirsty Asian right, species. Right. And I was looking at this additional property. We added this property known as the Three Springs Ranch in 1997, another 22 acres. And it's oh, okay. really beautiful. And um, that's where the director's house was. You know, so I, I had the luxury of living there. <laughs> you were living at work. It's so yeah. true. Uh, but, uh, but I thought, you know, really, we should not expand the irrigated footprint. We should draw a line around where we're doing it and not expand in the least. So when we rolled out the new name, we also introduced a, a, an enhanced mission to also cultivate and interpret the flora of California in addition to our okay. historic focus on Asian plants. Are you in primarily Northern California or all of California well, all, the West? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, sort of all of California. Well, there's kind of a botanical designation the California Floristic Province. Ooh, wow. You know, it's kind of, and it sort of floats into Oregon a little bit and that sort of thing. But, you know, I'll tell you, I Googled the word Cal Asia, yeah. and I will tell you, it's a restaurant in Los Angeles. Oh. <laughs> it's a, but that's kind of our mission. We're doing both okay, California Cal and Asia. Asia. Yeah, Cal Asia. You, you were like, you know, the trend of fusion, you know, the Mediterranean fusion Cal. It's true. That's you guys. It's true. You, exactly. you better ride with that. Yeah. Um, well, right now, you guys have a special a special show. Like, like yeah. before you came on, I don't think they did shows. Right. right? And, and shows are always nice because it gives us something to talk about. Yeah. It's something unique. You might curate an idea. And right. And yours right now is called From East to Zest. And can you explain to me what that is about and, sure. and how, how do people, you know, experience it? You betcha. Uh, so, uh, you know, our tagline is kind of like from east to west, that we bring these Asian, we've it, brought these right. Asian plants. But, you know, what we've done in a large indoor experience in the greenhouse, which is kind of great. You could go over there today. It's pouring rain, but it's right. really nice to go inside. Uh, we have done an exhibition on citrus cultivars. We've mm. got about 60 kinds of citrus in What's there. a cultivar? I don't understand that. It's a cultivated variety. So, like, okay. you know, you from wild plants, human beings have selected plants. And, and so a lot of citrus breeding, you know, has mm-hmm. happened over thousands Wait of years. Wait a minute. Those don't naturally grow in the wild for they, a pomelo they and, didn't. A, and a, no. a bear's lime? No. Oh, uh, like a Washington navel orange is a California <laughs> product, you know. So so there's been a lot of human selection. So mm. we've got all these kinds of citrus in there. And, you know, we're interpreting not only the origin and relationships of all mm. these kinds. And, you know, we've got, you know, we've got certainly kumquats, five kinds of kumquats. But then oh. we've got the lime quads that were hybridized with those. Okay. And with they, lime? Li- limes. A and lime and cross, a kumquat? Okay. Come with the lime quat, which you can eat j- the whole skin and everything oh, like you that. Can. Okay. And mandarin quats and all kinds of other interesting Japanese and uh, North okay. African and other kinds of citrus. So you, you learn quite a bit. And you also learn about Sonoma County's history with citrus because mm. before dairy and vineyard and uh, uh, was so big, mm. there was kind of a burgeoning citrus industry and two catastrophic freezes wiped it out and really? none of the farmers were willing to gamble on that they again. They want to do it again. So it went away from about the 20s. And so now it's kind of back. We're in a milder climate than we were, you know. Is that kind of up in Cloverdale, but now we're away from here. They have the Cloverdale Citrus Fair. Citrus Fair. And that was part of that, you know. And that goes back to the 1880s or something. So the like valleys that. here were yeah. citrus growers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where, where does citrus come from? So they all come from Asia. And so okay. that's why all, you know. And there's interesting sort of reciprocity. This kind of colonialist. Mm-hmm. But, you know, did you know that this. <laughs> did, did you, you know? know that the uh, the chili pepper, the potato, and the tomato, right. within 50 years of Columbus coming to the New World, spread to Europe, Africa, and Asia in ways that so, you can't imagine that. Was, I, oh. I was reading a cooking thing about yeah. how like Thai chilies... Right. Went from Thailand, there's America and like Africa and stuff like that. They, they spread from here. Yes. After the the, the discovery period yes. or the conquest period. Right. Um, but then quickly were manipulated there. Everywhere, like Szechuan cooking or in yeah, African cooking. Can, cook. can so, you imagine yeah. Chinese Szechuan cooking? Right. right which right. in the West Coast we have a lot of here. without chili. Without little red chilies. Yeah. Right. That's and, amazing. But there was a reciprocity because all citrus come from Asia. And imagine like Mexican food without limes or right. Peruvian food without lemons. And right. so and you know the. No CV- the mission system, right, exactly. The mission system brought citrus, but then subsequently other waves and breeding, and there's all kinds of great citrus Is, here, Let too. me ask you this question. Sure. Would we consider parts of the Fertile Crescent or Persia 
Iran nowadays? Part of where citrus came from? I think, yeah, I think in some cases, but it's really East Asia. East Asia. But it came a long time ago, like a thousand years ago. Okay. Silk Route in Marco so, Polo. Okay, good. So stuff, I yeah. would like to half apologize to the Persian woman who asked me when I recommended East versus, you know, from East to Zest. Yeah. I said, you should go there because I said, I believe, you know, citrus, there's a lot of it came from Iran. <laughs> and she goes, really? I'm like, I don't know. Go find out. <laughs> no. It's really further. But, you so, know. Okay. So, but, so it's like East Asia, but China, yeah. uh, that area. Yeah. Okay. And in the Moorish period, you know, citrus just really prolifer- proliferated mm-hmm. around the Mediterranean region. So there's okay. there's a lot of nor- we have like an Algerian uh, let me think, Marrakesh limetta oh. and we have an Algerian kind of citrus as well. So there's there's a lot of citrus that are from the Mediterranean. And these are all in your exhibit. When you say a cultivar, yeah. do, yeah. I, do are we have little shoots or you actually have trees in there? We have trees. Okay. It's like Alibaba's cave. <laughs> it was all these colorful there. fruit just really? hanging around. It's nobody's expecting we roll open the door and it's enchanting. It's that really nice. kind of nice. And it's nice to be in a greenhouse. You know, yeah. I, I think it sort of takes you out of yourself a little bit because it's humid and just mm-hmm. feels different. So people right. are kind of delighted. It's, it's like when people go to those butterfly experiences yes. in a northern city and they go like, oh, it's tropical all of a sudden. It's nice. And greenhouses are great. I love yeah. going inside. We have a lot of greenhouses in Sonoma County, Sonoma Valley, but a lot of it's devoted to grape, you know, growing sure. grape stuff or other products. Yep. Um, so it is kind of nice to have the citrus experience. Do you offer people margaritas made out of or, or, or old fashioned? <laughs> We've done some, you know, but all of these, they really are very cocktail right, adjacent. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. And why in California, a lot of citrus starts blooming, or not blooming, but har- we, we harvest citrus, like our lemons in my backyard yeah. are, are going down. Um, is that typical in the other parts of the country or like like in the Midwest? I guess in the Midwest, they don't have citrus. Florida. Florida. Yeah, and, and the California. Sunbelt, yeah. And then, yeah. People grow them indoors and things. And you My can, uncle you in know. Minneapolis has a, a long suffering oh. uh, Meyer lemon tree. And <laughs> he, he brings, brings it in out. Yes, right, it yeah. lives in his basement. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, so if people go there, not only do they learn about plants, but they have the history of citrus. And also, yes. like you guys explain how it came from East Asia. I love your the Marco Polo route of the Silk Road. Yeah. How it moved around. And, yep. and maybe, did the Romans have citrus? Or um, I wonder if it was at that time. You know, I think it's... I think it's later than Later that. in that time? Okay. Yeah. It's more like a thousand years ago, okay. not like okay. 2000, right? That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, are there any citruses that are unique to California, like they've been created here or well, bred here? Well, or well that's right? famously the Washington Naval Orange. You know, was right. just, it was, it's called the Washington was, Naval Orange? Yeah. It was bred in, um, in Riverside, California. Really? Yeah. That's the classic Naval yeah. Orange in a grocery store. And it, it has kind of a navel on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, So So that is definitely a California creation. Okay. But, but there's probably other selections. You know, there are a lot of citrus gardens and they're breeding all the time. Right. And, and, you know, I first saw something like this in Vienna of mm. all places where they had assembled a, a group of things. And, you know, it's a really nice experience because mostly some citrus are ever bearing and ever blooming. Right, that right. Kind of thing, But many of them, they set fruit in the fall. So it's right. like really good time to do this because we were here for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm-hmm. And our goal was really to give families that are together in the right. holidays something to do. Yeah, right. together. Wait, and, instead of argue? Yeah, yeah. yeah instead of argue. <laughs> but it was so great. I mean, so many times I saw like, you know, like 15 family members in four cars come and just all jazzed to be together right. and doing something fun together. So it's been great. And, you know, the indoor thing. And so if you come, you have that experience, but then you can go for a great walk in the garden. Well, and that's yeah. what, okay, so and uh, remind me, what's, uh, and probably, what does it cost to get in the garden again? It's $12 for adults, you okay. know, 10 for seniors and, okay. you know, children under 12 free. So you Because know, you, make them, you make them do suckering because they got small hands. Exactly. 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 Yeah, right. So, uh, and is yeah. there an additional cost to get into the... No. That's yes. included? Yes, included with the... Yep. Okay. So what, what I like about your, your garden um, is, yes, the plants and stuff, but it's so huge and sprawling, and there's yeah. trails, and there's a right. waterfall, and yeah. um, if people have limited mobility, I believe you can request the cart right. to help Well, them. you know, we sort of are trying to move, because, okay. you know, I feel like in the busier times, mm-hmm. the need is greater than we could right, supply. Right. So we're, we've been really dedicated to an accessibility program. Oh, good. So part of the opening of the exhibition, we also opened a new trail, oh, the good. California Oak Trail, that takes you up through the new property okay. to the Asian Garden on a very gentle 5% it was pretty It's a steep hike up It there. was an old quarry road. Yeah, no, it was very steep. So, <laughs> so there's an easy way to go. Good. So, okay, so you can come accessible. down that or you right. can, you know, if you want to go do that. So but, we don't yeah. need to wear like the high-tech hiking boots. Right. I mean, right now it's winter, so you might want to, but right. but, but you're allowed to amble and it's a little bit Absolutely. easier. Good. I've been really worried 
working on those sort of accessibility dimensions, but also on some safety ones where we're separating mm. pedestrian vehicular traffic because they yeah. were one and the same at some point <laughs> places. Right, you know, right. so a little dangerous, I thought. You know, but and yeah. are there still like little like, there are like little meditation benches? Up oh yeah, there, there's lots like, there's like flags and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah lots okay. of little private places. I mean, okay. it's really special to explore. You know, we're working on the so-called wayfinding to help people mm-hmm. to find their way around because I thought that you know everybody's like a little bit lost, not that lost, but somewhat <laughs> right, lost. Right, right. So you can get out of there, but you know we're trying to help people to intuitively okay. find their way. But there's a lot of little special nooks and crannies and oh, good. Beautiful, beautiful places. Good, it's a good spot. Um, how did you get into plants? Like why? Why plants, Scott? Yeah, yeah. So on. I grew up in Hawaii, and actually, oh. and so you know, kind of immersed in nature as one okay. does. And talk about waterfalls and all that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. But my grandparents lived in uh, off of Seattle on Bainbridge Island, and they oh. were great gardeners. And as kids, we would visit, and they they made gardening so fun mm. for me and my brothers. And so I got you know I'm sort of a lucky guy that I was interested in plants as a child, mm. and and then even as a young man, sort of aspired to not quite the career that I had, but pretty something like that. Right. So, and you know, I watched my three brothers change their minds about their careers like 50 <laughs> times, but I've, I, you know, it's a gift to me to You've know that. You've always been on plants. Yeah. And did yeah. you study horticulture? I did, or agri- yes. Okay. Horticulture. Okay. And uh, uh, they have a master's program in urban horticulture at the University of Washington, Seattle, where I, I was. Oh, that's where you, okay. Yeah. yeah. UW. UW. Uh, UW. Red Square? The UW. Yeah, yeah. Red Square. Yeah, the Huskies? Right. No. The Huskies. There you go. Okay. That's yeah, you got it. Yeah. Um, so what, horticulture is the study of plants and then so is agronomy the study of agriculture yeah. or the application and, of it? And the difference, yeah, that's agronomy is, is agriculture. Mm. The difference between horticulture and botany, horticulture mm. is the cultivation of plants. And you do learn about plant physiology, how plants okay. grow. Botany might be the evolutionary history of how plants are related to one another and oh, yeah, all of their morphological here. and other kinds of dimensions. Okay. So there's kind of separate sciences. Horticulture more of an applied science, really. What about... Uh, I hear funguses are not plants. So we even talk about those people that study them. What are they called? My, 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 mycologists. Mycologists? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys get in fights with them? No, or, we're uh, all friends. It's, it's a natural world. It's wonderful, <laughs> you know. And plants and animals go together, you know. They do. I, you know, it's not quite true to say that all life on Earth depends on plants because there are some things that made up, like phytoplankton, three, okay. you know, 30,000 beliefs right. in the Mariana <laughs> Trench. But mostly, yeah. most life on Earth is dependent upon Well, it. and people talk about, um, you know, a, a lot of our current agriculture is, I mean, all the, all the big cereals and stuff we have are yeah. dependent on plants, which are dependent upon pollination, right. which are dependent upon bees, which are dependent right. and, the, and the interconnectivity of it all. So true. And But you don't think about You don't think about it. No. And then all of a sudden someone says, oh, if bees collapse, like, okay, well, there are bees. Like, no, no. That means yeah. there's no apples. Right. There's no all those sort of foods. And, and you understand this yeah. massive connectivity of it all. Totally. It's, totally. It's you, pretty crazy. you know, we're not going to hand pollinate all those. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although when I tell my, so, I have pumpkins that I grow. Oh. They don't always pollinate. I'm like, kids, time to hand pollinate the kid. And they're like, Dad, this is weird. I'm like, oh, come on, let's go out and do it. And they, it works. They, they, <laughs> it totally works. I'm like, it's birds and bees, guys. They're like, yeah. Dad, we're not going outside to pollinate pumpkins. <laughs> so I'm out there, you know, I'm with your paper. I, yeah, I love it. You know, my yeah. kids are mortified. <laughs> but that's how I get pumpkins. Oh, that's nice. how I do it. Oh, good. Uh, hey, Scott, I want to talk a bit part of about other things that are happening in Sonoma Valley. Please, and, sure. And you're going to help me kind of riff on this. I'm going to go okay, to some good. events. But for, yeah. first of all, just so people know, East to Zest runs through. March? Yes, March 4th. March 4th, okay. Yep. Um, so you got a couple months here, guys, to go up there and see it. I uh, would highly recommend it. And it's, uh, the cost is included in your fee to get into the garden. And so then go for a walk in the garden. I well. love it. Yeah. Um, and do, 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 what days are you guys open? We're open every day but Tuesday. Okay. So, you know, Wednesday through Monday, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that works better. Wednesday yeah. through Monday. That works. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's, here's an event. I, I pulled this one. It's, they're all from our website, SonomaValley.com slash events if you want all this stuff yeah, cool. but here's a good one that I thought someone like you would be interested in yeah. uh, it's called Winter Treasures Salamanders Lichen and Mosses and a Waterfall and that's over at Sugarloaf beautiful which is kind of behind yeah. your property the right. diagonal there right. um, this is on February 4th and I guess basically you know um, this is run by the Sonoma Ecology Center yeah wonderful they have a partnership yeah. up there yeah and what they're doing is they have their naturalist named John Lynch and they're going to walk through the sublime beauty of sage green lichen I pronounce it lichen right yeah lichen, correct okay. yeah. on burgundy manzanita bark and moss bedecked uh, oaks down to the 25 foot dramatic plunge of Sonoma Creek wow so it's kind of neat they go to the visitor center they go to this grassy slope mixed evergreen forest a shady riparian corridor with the promise of Pacific giant salamanders do you know what those are I do and I've seen them on our property oh, really? as well. how they're, big are they they're huge they're maybe like about four oh, inches that is or something a very like that. large salamander yeah it is are they nocturnal no 
Well, Coming the one up. that I saw, <laughs> weirdly, the one that I saw, I saw it in a swimming pool. I, re- oh. I, re- you know, I rescued him. I felt sorry for him. Like he'd fallen <laughs> in there, but, but that's how I know how big they are. And they can't, I, I don't know if they like some of the newts, they have some sort of toxic skin. Yeah, right. right. So, Watch out. so I was like, oh, I jumped, get high on I jumped in the pool and pulled him out. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should wash my <laughs> hands. poison on there. Yeah, exactly. Why do you go blind? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> um, so they have these giant salamanders. Then they go down to that waterfall, which I, have you been to the waterfall at Sugarloaf? I haven't. Okay. No. It's a Amazing! It's, oh, it's running right now. Cool. I mean, wait for a uh, sunny day it would be better. But it'd down be there. gushing. Oh, right it's now, gushing so right yeah. now. It's great. That's, so Sonoma Creek is the watershed of the Sonoma Valley. Yeah. Um, Sonoma County also has the Russian River watershed and uh, the Arroyo de Osteria Americano. Right. Uh, and then also, I guess Jenner is a watershed. But but our, our watershed is drains the entire valley, and when it comes off the mountain, it does go over this waterfall at oh, wow. uh, at, at Sugarloaf. It's it's cool to see. Fabulous. Um, so for this event, like I said, I think this was what did I say February fourth. Yeah. yeah. So winter treasure salamanders, lichen, mosses, and a waterfall looks good. Bring um, appropriate footwear for muddy and or slippery trails. Quart of water and uh, appropriate uh, let's see uh, layers. Bring layers. Nice. That's kind of neat. Um, I'm going to have the person talking about this uh, in two weeks on this podcast, but Safari West is a wildlife preserve, also on the same mountain range, actually, that you're on, if you keep going up. They do the Valentine's Day Wild Jungle Love Tour. This is not for kids. (laughs) It is not for kids. Wild Jungle Love Tour. And the word Wild Jungle Love and Aphrodite, if you're listening, she already said she's going to agree. Aphrodite uh, could be my parents' age, or is my parents' age, and she's so funny because she speaks, she's like a the Dr. Ruth of animals. Oh, wow. And I'm like, wow, Aphrodite, this is really interesting and explicit. Um, but basically, this is a fun tour for people, for adults, to learn more about romance in the natural world. Safari West has like lemurs, rhinoceri, gnus, uh, gazelles, uh, cheetahs. Yeah, it's up there. It's a, it's a wildlife African preserve. It's really cool. This is a fun tour. People can stay up there. You can stay up there all the time. Right. And you can also take a tour anytime. But only in February do they do the wild... Uh, animal wild jungle love amour party. (laughs) (laughs) Amour. Amour. And that is February 11th or February 12th because Valentine's Day falls in the middle of the week this this year. Um, What else we got? That's fantastic. Oh, this one, this is is either agriculture or horticulture. February 18th, they have the Olive Odyssey out at the Olive Press. This is weird. Olives. What do you know about olives? A little bit. You know, yeah. You're a liar. You know a lot about olives. Not really. No, no, I do. I might know how to grow them, but you know, notice how you can move them around when they're mature trees. We see them pulled out of the Central Valley. That is so weird. Yeah, they dig them up. There's a place right off, I think it's off Leveroni over there. Yeah, right. And they have them in these big containers. Yeah. And they're ancient trees. Right. They schlep them around like they're just, you you can cut the roots. Not not so much. A redwood tree? Not not so much. Yeah. No. Yeah. That is kind of weird. They must regenerate roots easily. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Is yeah. there some scientific word you're going to impress me with? Like, you know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll think about that. <laughs> I'll yeah, come yeah, back yeah. to you. Okay. Um, but this is on February 18th at the Olive Press, which is down here south of the Cinema Plaza. Um, and it says, uh, join us for the 13th year. The world of olives comes alive in a feast for the senses with olives, olive oil, olive and spoiled art, o- olive inspired art, okay. and more. Wow. Um, so yeah, and then Jacuzzi Winery and the Olive Press, all owned by the same oh, family, right, so right, right down there. Um, we do make a fair amount of olive oil here in California and oh, in yeah. the Sonoma Valley and Sonoma County. Some really we delicious ones. Ranch and some right. other places sure. like that. Oh. Um, but yeah, that is funny. There aren't a lot of trees you can just dig up transplant and their agricultural trees. I don't think right. an almond tree moves. I can't think of like any fruit tree. You know, you could transplant citrus, but you'd have to be yeah. very careful about it. You, you know, do. like you'd have to have a big root ball and all this right. stuff. Whereas these olives, they pretty well cut the roots really hard. They're kind of small root balls. <laughs> right. And then they're ancient trees. They have like, you know, quite wizened and you can you know, buy trunks. You 100, 150-year-old yeah. tree over there. Yeah. Those are not inexpensive, I think. Yeah, no, I don't think so yeah. either. But it, they yeah. look great, though. Yeah, they do. Um, other event we have coming up February 18th, there's a crab feast at Buena Vista Winery. Huh. Have you ever been to a crab feed? I have. Okay. What, yeah. what, what do you like about them, or what do you not like about them, or what's your, what's your experience? Well, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a mess, for it's sure. You, so you wear mess. this bib, and like you're just getting everywhere. But and, and then, you know, and it's funny. You think that you love crab so much, you would eat a lot more than you do. Right. You, you quickly kind of reach your you, satiation. There is, there is a tipping point, also, <laughs> between work and food. Yeah. Yeah, my wife loves crab. She hates oh. going to crab feeds because of the work. Oh, yeah. So if I clean it and cook, 
and, and do it. It is. And the dungeon is, I mean, you said you grew up in Washington area. You yeah. were in Washington. You yeah. guys have great crab season up oh, there. Oh, totally. And it's open now, too. Yeah. Yeah. Dungeon is crab season's longer up there. Yeah. Here, we yeah. just opened it, um, and, and now's the time. Well, Buena Vista Winery is doing one February 18th. Oh, nice. And you can satisfy your cravings for gastronomic pleasure at our luxurious crab feast, where we'll have exquisite crab ready to crack and paired with the finest Buena Vista wines. Yeah. You know, Buena Vista is owned by a man named John Charles Boisset, French guy, incredibly flamboyant, always wears red socks. It sounds like he just wrote that yeah. <laughs> in his voice, in his French voice. Yes, but uh, it's always a good time. Buena Vista always puts on a great party. Beautiful. And, and it's really fun. Uh, so that's February 18th if you want to go to the Crab Feast. So, okay. You ready for the next part? Yeah, sure. It's called We Get Questions. Now, oh. as you know, we have two visitor centers. Okay. Uh, one in the plaza, another right. one south of uh, town at Vianza, Fam- uh, Vianza Sonoma Winery. Oh, okay. um, and we get people coming all the time. They come, I saw, as I was coming here to the studio, I saw a bus pull up and they were walking in and, and people ask oh. us questions all the time. So, cool. What I'm going to do is, because you're my podcast guest, yes. you're now going to be one of our visitor services reps. Okay. Uh, a Sonoma professional. Great. I'm going to ask you some questions. Please. And you're just going to try to answer them. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Where can I get a really good steak in oh. Sonoma? Oh, there's there's some choices there. <laughs> there right? are. Yeah. There are. You know, um, you know, one of the places I really love is Valley Bar and Bottle. And oh, they, yeah. they make these small plates, but they do, you know, like if you're going to get a steak there, it's going to be, you know, like four ounces. It's right. Be a little guy. Right. But, but, you know, maybe that's all the meat you should be eating. Yeah, anyway, right? touche, Mr. Yeah, Herbivore. Right, right, yeah, right. Get some stuff there. You know, I have been to a very fancy restaurant at the Lodge, oh, yeah. Wit and Wisdom. <laughs> yeah. That is a killer steak, but, right, you know, good. bring the, you know, bring, <laughs> special yeah, occasion. Yes, yes, a special occasion, right. So that's great. Okay. But I think those are those are some places I would go. We go to the, um, the Glen Ellen Star, you know, oh, it's close to spot. us. And yeah, really, right the they do a lovely steak. And they, I think okay. they, often it's like one you can split, right? Oh, good, yeah, good call. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's actually, you mentioned about meat and stuff like that. Meat's yeah. intensive, it could be expensive, like right. you know, steak. But yeah. sometimes you want to splurge yeah. for a really good one. So I like that. And Glen Ellen Star, Ari runs that restaurant. It's delicious. Family. They also have great crab there. They'll do it in the oven. It's just, oh, it's so good. That, that brick oven they have there. Right. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. You know, we got to know Jane Brody, who basically invented consumer health in, yeah. in America with the New York Times column. She's continues to publish since 1965, but she once told me your steak should be the size of a, size of a pack of cards. Oh. And no bigger. It should be like really? that little okay. seven ounce guy. That's, 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 that's in that little guy yeah, there, not the 32 ounce. Right. Probably not so good. For <laughs> yeah. A little much, yeah. Quality, not yeah. quantity. Yeah. Right, good. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that one. Yeah. All right, this one's a trick. This one's not a trick, but it's like people came in. There was a couple from Chile. They came oh. in Chile. Cool. And they were looking for things to do with their kids. They oh. had grade school age kids to do in Cinema Valley. And this might not be, this one's a little tricky, right? Because like. Yeah, not wine tasting. Not <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, they spill. Right. You know, that's, that's what, what, what did uh, Winston Churchill say? Like, never have a kid make your martini because it's unseemly and they use too much vermouth. <laughs> It's so true. So, yes. You got to think about that stuff. Yeah, exactly. So what, if, if you were thinking kids, and I'm thinking grade school, let's say, let's say like, like the fifth grader, sixth grader. So they're enough yeah. to be somewhat, you know, impulse control. Right, right. But they still need to be able to entertain and find something interesting. There's what so, would you think? so many great walks yeah. and, you know, hikes. But of course, Jack London is fascinating. Oh, and that's good. a nice right. kind of family length kind of loop that you right. could do and learn some stuff and right. see the, the, the remnants that's, of that wolf that's house. That's your neighbors across the valley. Across the valley, indeed. So okay. that's good. You know, of course, I got to pitch my own place. That's right. pretty fun for kids because, you know, there's just lots of things. With, you know, children follow their nose. And, see, and of right. course, animals interest everybody. Right. So there's a lot of wildlife on our site. Um, you know, there's some old school stuff in Sonoma County, yeah. Train Town. I've never been, but okay. it looks interesting. Right. Now, so Train Town ha- it is really funny. It's like yeah. an old school train discovery, old Western oh, yeah. uh, place. It's right across uh, right across from Winton Wisdom. So yeah. so when you're done with your steak, yeah. you, you can go over there or right. go for or whatever. Right. Um, and it has a little train you can ride. Yeah. And there used to be trains that would come to Sonoma. Oh. So Depot Park, which is where the Friday Farmer's Market right. is here. That's actually on the right of way, and the, and the trail that goes along the northern part of our town, that was a, a, tr- a rail. And you know, right across the highway from us, I think it ran all the way up to Kenwood Depot, right? It so did. it was right Matter across fact, the street from us, yeah. Even further up towards Melita Station. It oh. followed what was oh. a stagecoach and then later oh. a rail line Very good. when people would come up from San Francisco on their boats okay. and then catch a train. 
to and, come up here. And where was that depot? Like Shellville, like out there? Shellville had one. Yeah. Um, uh, there, well, there was a one in Sonoma, right where D- Depot Park is. Yeah. Um, I think Glen Ellen had one. So there's yeah, different right. spots where yeah. these little trains would stop. Yeah, that was... Uh, hmm. I know the name of that station because there was a gas station that followed it. It was called... Oh, really? Yeah. um, Because it was the name of the original Vintner that was on our property. That is a very old enterprise from the 1850s. Okay. And and that root disease took it out. Oh, right. The flocks um, were... Yeah. It's like, starts with a B, but I'm... It's going to come to you tomorrow. It will. When you're away from the microphone. I'm going to text it to you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I'll edit that back in. Okay, okay, please. There you go. Uh, Here's a question. Yeah. Uh, You might know this one. What are some interesting interesting native plants that I can see in Sonoma. Well, of course, the oaks that anchor these ex- ecosystems okay. and can support like as many as, you know, several hundred other species of, uh, oh, an oak of life. Tree. An oak tree. There's a lot going on in an oak tree. Okay. So, and I mentioned that we... I think that should be a children's book. Yeah, it's, right. it's, There's it's a lot tr- going on in an oak tree. It is very true. Okay. So, on our property, we've got seven species I mentioned, you know, so mm-hmm. the, the huge valley oaks, the mm-hmm. blue oaks, which are sort of bluish in leaf, okay, the, right. the black oak, which is deciduous as well. And then, mm-hmm. you know, what happens happens with our coast live oak mm-hmm. is those are sort of hybrid swarms. They're in some cases crosses with the black oak and then introgressed or cross back to one of the other parents. So they don't all, everyone looks wait, a little wait, different. Wait. Are you so, so the live oak is not its own species? It is, but it it's very incestuous. Wow. So on our property, every one looks a little different than the other. So it is a big hybrid swarm wait, with blood like a, from other species. Can like a live oak crossbreed with a, a valley oak? No. Okay. So the, there are, th- I guess, four subgenera, you know, mm-hmm. within the genus Quercus of okay. oaks, there are these groups of the white oaks, they're the black oaks, they're the red oaks. And so they only can kind of cross within their group. Got it. But the, the, the white oaks all are interfertile, the black oaks, same way. So Interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is, and, and the oak trees are native to California. Yes. I mean, oh, but oaks are like distributed across the entire band of this this latitude. Roughly. I think it, I think it's entirely northern hemisphere, but they're in okay. Europe and Asia, and you know as well. Okay. Uh, Europe. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so so uh, over at the uh, botanical garden, they can see some native plants like the oak yeah, tree. Absolutely. Do you have? Uh, it's a non-native plant. Right. But it's ubiquitous. Yeah. And that is the Himalayan blackberry. Right, we do. Which you can't get rid of. Oh, you can. Even you, you saying that word, the more it popped up. You have to just dedicate yourself <laughs> to it. You can get rid of it. Yes, really? you do. It's like yes. planting mint or yes, bamboo. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you just got to stay on it. And, no. you, and you can use less toxic methods. Right, you can right. use mechanical methods. To right, take right. Rid of it. Yes, but I've really tackled a bunch of blackberry patches on our property because, okay. you know, here's why you want to do it. It's two words for your rat habitat. That's yeah, what's living in there. Yeah, they love in there. Yeah, because other critters can't get to them and and all the stickers and stuff like that. But you and then they've got a ready food source with all the berries and stuff. Berries are delicious. You, you really don't. Yeah, the berries are delicious, man. Yeah. But it, well, it is funny because um, another famous Sonoma County horticulturalist brought them here, supposedly. Right. Is that uh, Luther? Luther Burbank? Yes, yeah. He's yeah. like, well, this is a great plant. Why did I oh, unleash it right. accidentally? Is that true? All yeah, that's right, what I hear. Yeah. And, wow. and, and I was once at the farmer's market with my kids. And, uh, you know, I, I always buy stuff from the farmer's market. But one guy was selling, uh, you know, baskets of blackberry you know, right there. I'm oh, like, right. okay, but over here by the train track, like the entire thing is blackberry bushes. <laughs> we can go pick our own. Right. <laughs> right there. Well, no, they did the work for you. It's they easy. did. That's yeah, true. Yeah. And and they, they battled the rats. I yeah, guess. that's the exactly. way. Um, are there other native plants that maybe aren't like only in Sonoma, but are kind of special here that you know of? And Well, there's a lot of rare plant populations. You know, California biodiversity, one of the hot sp- biodiversity hotspots on planet Earth mm. is extraordinary. Like over the next hill is a different species of manzanita, a different species of California lilac or Ceanothus. Okay. So it's a very finely mantled biodiversity that's everywhere. Okay. And so we have a lot of rarity in Sonoma County yeah. and a lot of rare plant populations. One that I love is on Cavedale Road above okay. uh, the Sonoma Valley. It's a population of the McNab cypress, this natural mm-hmm. cypress species. And it's very disjunct. It's an outlying population. The others are mostly on the, in the Sierra foothills. But here okay. we have one in our own Myokamas Mountains. Did, did a bird drop it off at one time? Or I don't dinosaur you know. Sometimes the <laughs> These are remnant populations that once been more connected, and so 
they they become sort of isolated over time. You know, fires and other things may become. And they kind of change and go their own route yeah, over yeah. over generations. Right. Wow. If you ever drive Cave Dale, you'll see this population. If you just really? keep your eyes open, you get into this weird forest of these cypress okay. trees. It's very cool. What's it, what kind of what kind of say it again? It's a cypress. It's like related to the Monterey cypress, those okay, big right. trees, but it's smaller, but it's kind of bluer. Okay. And it's almost a monoculture of cypress that they huh. really hog the whole thing. Yeah. So it's funny because when I go over Sonoma Mountain sometimes yeah. over to Santa Rosa, it's, 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 that's a great drive because you go from the oak land and the valley yeah. of Santa Rosa Plain. Yeah. You go up this hill and you know it's, it's kind of oaks, oaks. It's and like Crane Canyon. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're in this weird redwood forest. Yeah. No, it's a like, like you literally yeah. just turn a corner right, and right. boom, redwood. Right. And and it's it only lasts for like while you're driving, I don't know, two minutes. Right. And you're out of it again. Right. And it must be like a, a gully where water drains yeah. or something's just perfect. It's often hydrology that they like, you know. Yeah. Really, but yeah. Okay. Um, eucalyptus trees, good or bad, go. Well, you know, it's it is part of the cultural landscape of California. Mm-hmm. They have a, a feature uh, called allelopathy, where they like exude sort of a chemical so that other plants can't grow. So then they're hogging all they're the resources. Jerks. All the, they're taking all the water, they're taking all the nutrition out of the soil, oh. and nobody else can grow them. Wait, just it's called them. allelopathy. Allelopathy. Yeah. Can I say someone's being allelopathic? Like, yes. You're being allelopathic. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're hogging you're all the resources. All resources. Yeah, exactly. And because the eucalyptus, which I think is called a gum tree in Australia, yeah. Yeah. they're not from here. Right. They were brought, my understanding, for railroad ties was the thought. Well, and the oldest grove is on the Berkeley campus that they did this test camp, uh, row, <laughs> and they thought, but it's not very good wood for that. It cracks right. and checks. Right. But, you know, the, I'd say bad in, a, in fire country. It's, it is. It's they, scary. They are right? known to explode with fire. Totally. And that's kind of un- yeah. uncomfortable. But, like, the yeah. redwoods don't do that, right? Like no. The redwoods kind of have that no. thick bark and they, they stay They that survive, way. and then they kind of, you know, flesh out again or flesh out again okay. afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and speaking of what, now we're kind of going sideways again. These are non native. Do you have any plants on your property that are like the ones that like stink like a dead body or like every oh. hundred years they like, like any of those weird, or one that eats people or right. something like that? You know, it's so funny because in my career I have twice flowered that Amorphophallus titanum, the Titan Arum. And we did one at the Conservatory of Flowers right. in San Francisco and got 40,000 visitors over like 10 days. It was crazy. And then when when I went to New York, we had one too. Okay. By then I learned we put a live web, webcam on it because oh, the main smart. thing is everybody wants to know when is it open, you know, right, so you're right. waiting. But um, I will tell you, people will do crazy things in front of a live webcam. So I learned that part <laughs> too. It's like, you, you have to like post a security right. officer. Keep be, your clothes be, on. Be, right? be careful. <laughs> be exactly. careful. But so, you know, there are other arums that are related that have that same sort of stinky thing. And mm-hmm. basically it's their pollination, you know, strategy mm-hmm. that they're fly or, you know, fly right. pollinated. So they, they might exude that, uh, you know, dead meat odor to attract flies yeah, to I, pollinate them. I heard them. that was before other insects were developed that would go to nectar. Oh, right. Uh, my understanding is that they, they, in, the, in the records somewhere, Moths and flies. They and, went to the dead smelling stuff yeah, yeah. and then pollinated. That's clever strategy. It, well, that's better than me doing the pumpkins by myself. Yeah. Without my kid's help. There you go. That's what that's what could have been. So um, tell me a, a couple more things. I, I've, I've really enjoyed spending time with you. Thank this you. Is, this Back is great. This, yeah, is, thank this you. is great. Um, when, when people want to come to Sonoma and kind of experience the outdoors, it seems like you know a lot about that. Are, are there other places that you recommend people check out or, or things to do? There, there's so many wonderful, you know, kind of hidden little trails and hikes right, and things right. like that. So you mentioned Sugarloaf, you know, Hood right. Mountain is amazing, you know, Anna Del Trion oh, Park, yeah, that's which, a good one. which has a Huge. lot of oaks and interesting, you know, in the tr- it, it varies a lot in through there. And, too, yeah. and that's, that separates yeah. us from Santa Rosa right. again. And that, that is a huge park. Absolutely. I, I always forget how big it is when I'm hiking with my wife. Right. And then I'm like, oh, right. it's a really long trail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a long good. trail. <laughs> exactly. No, good exercise. That's, yeah. that's a good spot. Yeah. And don't forget the, you know, the bay, you know, like yeah. out there close to San Pablo Bay is really right. interesting. And it's, it's more varied terrain. I went mm. to, you know, there are a lot of, you know, winery landscapes and stuff right. were quite interesting. So, right. Yeah. Now you're right. Talk about the bay. Um, yeah. the, the bay is like a, like we have a slough, which is right. like these places where the bay comes in and it's brackish water and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, we went to Fremont and we learned about a thing called pickleweed, yeah. which is this funny little plant that grows there in this, in this almost saline soil. Right. right? It does. And, and it's like, I'm like, how could something. Super salty. Yeah. How could something live there and yeah. how it just adapted? Right. And it is nice to go down to, here it's called the San Pablo Bay. It's the same bay. Right. right? San, San Francisco, Francisco Bay. bay. Yeah. Um, how those plants have adapted to grow mm-hmm. down there and, and kind of walk in that area. It feels it's, good. Very good to be by the water and salt does. water and that sort of thing. And it does. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, Scott, here's a question for you. If people want more information about the Sonoma Botanical Garden, how do they find out more information about Of that? course, it's our easily navigated website, 
www.sonomabg for botanical garden. Okay. Dot org. Okay. Sonomabg.org. <laughs> Sonomabg.org. Yeah. You have the information on there. Um, can people, do people need to buy tickets on the website or they can buy them once they go? To they, they the come, we ask you to check in at the gift shop and, okay. and then head out and such. But there's a lot there too. You know, we've done a lot of citrus merch in connection with oh, this really? exhibition. So that you can buy some cool citrus stuff too. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys might have to do your own like a uh, cocktail recipe book from the I, botanical garden. It's so true. Absolutely. Oh, that'd be kind of neat. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get up there to check out more about the citrus and Please. find out, you know, I've got like three citrus or four citrus on my property. Uh, I, I have a very urban garden. Right. Actually, I took out my lawn and oh. and have a, a, a edible landscape. Well done. Yeah, well done. I know. It's, it's really permaculture. Cool. Yeah. I do, I do yeah. have permaculture. It's funny yeah. you mentioned that. I have all the permaculture stuff going, but yeah. uh, I'm really excited. Every time I go there, I'm like, oh, that's a neat idea. I, sh- I should try that. There's a couple of citrus we have that you will want to have. And there's two that particularly people that are interested in the culinary arts. Mm-hmm. Yuzu, which is beloved of chefs. It yes. doesn't taste like a lime or lemon. has its own flavor. So, And that's a very hardy citrus. So if, even in the valley floor, we get a lot of frost. Right. That's a very good citrus. And then we have another one called Sudachi, which oh, is very that. little known. But the Ponzu braising or dipping sauce for mm-hmm. like for tempura, you know, right, you did, right. that is more properly made from Sudachi. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in the United States, we make it out of lemons or something. But <laughs> we're growing Sudachi. So you can see all these citrus and understand okay. them. And th- those are all good candidates for cultivation here. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. All right. So, oh. SonomaBG.com. Yeah. For D- all, .org. 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 Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Everyone check it out. And they should, I'm sure you got on Facebook and Instagram as well. Yeah, as that absolutely. Right yep. Well, Scott, thanks for coming along. Pleasure. It's great, great to be here. Thank you. I want to remind everybody who's listening, hi, mom and dad, that uh, you can always comment, subscribe, tell your friends about this. And if you want more information about Sonoma Valley, go to SonomaValley.com. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. 